So as I was saying, you, you can see the project partners, they've all played a really important role in the, the Carlisle project. Um, uh, I guess the, wow, you don't want to be trying to operate this thing. Um, the, the genesis, I guess, of the, the Carlisle uh, Fire Project uh, began when we started thinking about the Otway Arc. So the Otway Arc is, is currently Parks Victoria's landscape um, scale small mammal recovery project. Um, we were, had a little bit to do with the design and, and helping to set up the monitoring and, and how that, that project would operate, uh, along with a, a whole range of other partners like Delpin, University of Melbourne. Um, as it was designed, we, we set up a, a network of, of monitoring ca cameras that would allow us to uh, detect any changes in both um, feral predators and small mammals across the landscape. It was, it was divided into four, um, four zones across the Otway region. So the, the eastern one around the Anglesey Aries um, area, also uh, the, the central Otways um, were the, the second two zones and to the far west was the Carlisle Heath was part of Carlisle Heath was included. Um, there was a decision made that because there was such a good mammal assemblage remaining in the Carlisle Heath that we wouldn't incorporate it into uh, the, the fox baiting program, which was really the main action of the, the Otway Arc was to um, roll out fox baiting across the landscape to uh, reduce predation pressure on our, our threatened species of interest. So uh, we didn't, uh, we made the decision as a, a collective to not bait in the Carlisle Heath because we were getting such strong uh, records of, of mammal populations in that region. Um, these species included swamp antichinus, southern brown bandicoots, and longnose potaroos. Um, and really, we didn't understand the mechanisms for why there seemed to be such a thriving community of mammals in that region compared with, say, the Anglesey Heath in the far, far east, um, where some of those species, through the work that Barb Wilson had done largely, had been disappearing from the landscape. Um, we wanted to understand those mechanisms a bit better. Um, we had obviously some hunches as to why that might have been the case, but we really wanted to understand it. So this really has driven our focus on the Carlisle Heath over the last three or four years. And it's a beautiful place to work, I must say. Um, there are a number of um, threatening processes that we thought um, could explain why Anglesey um, Heath had, um, had lost some of its mammals. Um, so they included um, fire, both wild and prescribed, the, the spread of um, Phytophthora cinnamomai and, um, and predation by uh, foxes and cats throughout the landscape. One of the things that started to concern us um, throughout the probably the 2019-20 bushfire season, and we had quite a number of uh, bushfires start in the Carlisle Heath um, from lightning strikes. And we be started to become quite concerned that this was going to eventually lead to a bushfire that, that could take out quite a large portion of the, the Carlisle Heath, um, given that the, the fire history in the region had sort of left a lot of the, a lot of the vegetation long unburnt. Um, and we, we were starting to be concerned that a fire could spread quite easily and take out quite a, a lot of that vegetation which would be a real risk to the, the mammal assemblage that had, had survived to that point. Um, we knew that the, the country was quite well fire adapted and the vegetation would recover. But as you can see from the photo on the left, both planned and wildfire leaving the vegetation quite simplified. And so uh, mammal species potentially wouldn't thrive as well and predation risks could be, be, quite, um, be quite a lot more severe. So um, at the time, my colleagues and I, um, Mark will present to you later, I won't go into the details about this project because Mark will, um, we got really, really interested in what happens to these critical weight range mammals um, in, a, in a bushfire or a planned burn in particular. So we, we uh, raised funds through the Herman Slade Foundation to GPS um, collar uh, a number of uh, long nosed potaroos that would be exposed to um, planned burns. Um, we, we were able to do this and we had some alarming results in our first year where predation rates are quite high. Again, I won't go into the details because Mark will in his next presentation, but it did lead us to question, um, uh, and, and, and largely that was driven by predation events. So uh, the bushfire occurred, uh, sorry, the planned burn occurred, 
those animals survived the planned burn, uh, but within the following two weeks were, were largely predated on. Um, it obviously became quite an alarming thing. Um, we were concerned that both foxes and cats were, were able to increase their predation efficiency post burn, and we needed to um, really understand that mechanism. Um, around that time, the, the Australian Government's Wild Otways Initiative was announced. Um, and we thought this was a wonderful opportunity to both uh, learn some more about the system of how fire and, and predation interacted, um, and also to try and um, apply some of the, the management regimes in an experimental way that, that might see us, um, see us through this issue. So we applied for and successfully uh, won the tender for the fox and cat management part of the, the, Carla, of the um, Wild Otways Initiative. Um, and we designed a series of experiments to test um, how, uh, how we could incorporate different um, land management techniques to reduce the impact of, of predation on these threatened species. So um, the, the project is, is underway now and we are looking at, at really sort of two land management tools that we might use to reduce the impact on, on those species of interest. Uh, we will um, begin to do some localised uh, um, predator control in and around planned burns to see if we can reduce directly reduce the, the activity of predators within the landscape post burn and see whether that reduces the uh, impact of predation on, on uh, potaroos and, and other species in the landscape. And we're also going to look at whether or not our, uh, the way that we um, use fire in the landscape by leaving more uh, unburnt refugia, et cetera, um, might reduce that impact as well because there, there's more places for those animals to hide and will make um, predation hypothetically uh, less efficient or predators less efficient in the area. So we've designed our project around that and we're, we're currently rolling it out. Um, Another part of the, and I must say, when I say we, I, I use we as the collective, we're obviously working incredibly close with the, the land management agencies, um, DELP and Parks Victoria through um, the Forest Fire Management Victoria in planning these burns have been wonderful collaborators and just as interested as we are in the results across the Carlisle landscape. The other part of the project that we're looking into, which Tamika will talk to um, also this morning, is a, a project that we funded again through the Ann Potter Foundation. And that was to look basically at the reverse angle. So if we start to manipulate the way we do uh, burns across the landscape um, and leave more unburnt refugia, what does that mean in summer for bushfire spread? So if there's less un untreated fuel, which is probably a bad term, but untreated fuel in the landscape, um, what does that mean for, for fire spread? Um, not only as a risk to communities sort of in the region, but also um, a risk to losing the entire um, area, I guess, in, in, in one fell swoop from a bushfire in summer, which would also have a, a, a really detrimental effect to, to mammal populations. So Tamika will talk about what, what her research is, but effectively she will be taking real data from the ground and then modelling that to understand if we apply different fire regimes, what it means to the risk of severe bushfire and losing the, the Carlisle Heath as a vegetation unit. Um, that's largely what I was hoping to uh, talk to today. Now I'll see if I can stop sharing and, and pass over to my colleagues.